Hello to everyone and welcome to this tutorial. Today we will work with the previous example 3 and improve it a little bit in order to work it more energy efficient. So, I create a example 4, copy paste everything from this example and modify it. And uh, let me explain what I add in this example. You will see that I add this line and um, I will use this bit. If you open the data sheet in the page 72, you will find that for the register EICRA, which is external interrupt control register A, you will see that you can use four bits from eight. This two is for the interrupt one and this two is for interrupt zero which we are interesting. Now we want to use that bit ISC00 and put it to one in order to detect any logical change on interrupt zero and uh, this bit will be s uh, switched off, so we will not use it. Now, I enable it here, like that, and declare it with that name, int0, any change. Now here, I add two new lines between uh, these two. So, um, I load to the register 19 uh, that change. So I enable that bit and with STS command I load that register I19 R19 to the EICRA register. Why I didn't use the out register, uh, out command here and use STS is because that register is out of range and you need to use that command STS. So what happened now exactly? Our program is still the same, we just enable extra one register to detect on the interrupt zero any change. So not only in the previous example, if only the signal will be touched to ground, the interrupt will, was triggering. Now if it will be pull up or pull down, it will be also triggering. So. Um, Let's see how this interrupt is working. We read the state of the port PB0, right? Now, we jump if that bit, if that pin B0 is uh, touched to ground and enable LED with that command and exit from the interrupt. That's it. Previously, we jump again and looping, which actually was not very efficient because if the button was pressing to the ground, we still not put the chip to the sleep. We still consume energy and execute these commands, right? Now, in this example, we switch on the LED and exit from the interrupt and sleep. If uh, the user release the the button, uh, the, the finger from the button, and switch it to SSR. This interrupt will be triggered again, and when it will be triggered, it check the state of the PB0 because it will be in the high uh, level. It will switch off the LED and exit again from the interrupt. That's it. So. We add this declaration, this declaration here, add these two lines to enable that functionality for the interrupt zero, and modify the output here. Instead of jumping to the interrupt, we exit from the from the from that interrupt. And uh, in this way, as I say, we optimize the energy of the microcontroller. We put it in the sleep mode 
in the most time. And also, when uh, why this approach is better? When we will have uh, many different interrupts, the idea is try to execute the interrupt as quick as possible, not stay on it, because if some other interrupt will be triggering, it will be not executed because you are already in the interrupt loop here, and uh, the any new interrupt will be not executed at all. So you need to run say command again here in order to monitor some other interrupt, or you need to exit as much quick as possible from the interrupt and uh, wait for the other interrupts. So this update is very important if you want to use many other interrupts in the future, right? Not just interrupt zero. Maybe, for example, with the timer interrupt, and also because uh, we don't polling the code as in the previous example when the button pressing, but just execute the required command for different level, high or low, and exit. That's it. Thank you for watching, and see you in next tutorial.